to worship with Lake Oswego United Church of Christ on this fourth Sunday of Advent, on this uh, second Sunday of our hybrid worship, on this first Sunday, I think that most of us have driven in with snow on the ground. It was beautiful on the way in this morning. So thank you for being here uh, and welcome. Welcome to those of you who are here in the pews. Uh, welcome to those of you who are joining us online. We're so glad to have you here and we invite you to uh, just be fully a part of our service today. I want to say a special welcome to uh, those who are joining us for the first time. We're really glad to have you here in worship. And as I said before, we just invite you to participate fully. Uh, one of the things that we say and believe is that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Uh, so know that you're welcome this morning. And if this is your first time, I also invite you to fill out um, a, a visitor card. If you are joining us online, you can find the link to the card in that chat. Uh, if you're here in person, there's a little pink slip on the back of the pew in front of you. Actually, it's not the pink slip, the white slip on the back of the pew in front of you. And you can place that in the basket in the entryway, and it's an easy way for you to let us know that you're here and to learn about our church as well. Uh, we also have a bulletin for our service this morning. Those of you here in the pew should already have them. Uh, if you're joining us online, you can download the link in the chat box. This has our order of worship and announcements. And I just want to highlight a few announcements that we have uh, coming up. First of all, uh, tomorrow night, December 20th at 7 p.m. on Zoom, we will have our longest night service. This is an Advent service of comfort and hope and a time to remember that uh, even while there's lots of joy in this season, there may also be a lot of grief. And many of us are carrying losses, either personal or just from this last year. And this is a time that we come together and just give space for that. And so if you're able to join us, please do. Uh, you can find the link in the E! News and Bulletin. And um, we invite you to bring a candle, pen, and paper with you as we'll have some time for reading, prayers, and reflection. Friday is Christmas Eve already, and we have uh, two services that will be happening here. Both will be hybrid, so in person and live streamed. Four o'clock, we will have a service uh, that is geared a little bit more toward families um, and children, uh, but all ages are welcome. And uh, at seven o'clock, we'll have our more traditional lessons and carols service. And again, all are welcome. We do ask you to sign up in advance and let us know that you're coming. And so you can find the link for that uh, in the E! News Bulletin. Those of you watching online, uh, there is a link in the chat as well. Let's see, uh, then a week from today, we'll be back for uh, hybrid worship here, and we'll be um, sharing in a wonderful reader's theater and pageant that Ralph Holcomb has adapted for us called Jose y Maria. And uh, that again will be 10.30 this, uh, a week from today, and signups for that will go out later today via email. And then one more worship announcement for two weeks from today, January 2nd, when we celebrate Epiphany and the story of the Magi following the star, our tradition has become that we share our star story. So each year we pick up a star on Epiphany Sunday that has a word on it that we carry with us through the year. And uh, this is a time that we revisit those words. And so if you have a story about your star word that you would be willing to share for our congregation, uh, please let me know. I'm looking for two more volunteers who would be willing to share. Okay, and then just a couple notes about today. For those of you in the sanctuary, just a reminder to keep your masks on while we're in the sanctuary and actually everywhere indoors here. Uh, again, enjoy the music that we have, but we ask you not to do any robust uh, singing so that we can stay safe. So you're welcome to hum the words, mouth the words, uh, and still enjoy the music. And then just be mindful again of uh, each other's space and comfort zones as we're all navigating uh, this new normal. Uh, a couple other little things I just want to say. We have a screen now. You will see this in operation a little bit today. We'll be, oh, no screen today? Never mind. You'll see the screen in operation at a later time. And uh, just so you know, this won't be its permanent residence. We are actually going to mount it up, up above me here, uh, but that will happen in the new year. So uh, just uh, stay tuned for that. And then finally, um, Mina, I think your offer to take people through the apartment. So many of you know we have uh, the Lake Oswego Transitional Shelter Ministry apartment that is attached to our 
building here. And this is an apartment that we've, this ministry has been going on for 30 plus years. It helps um, people who are transitioning out of homelessness and families come and live for, uh, for just a few months usually while they're getting their feet under them. We're between families right now. And so the apartment is open to be viewed. And Mina, who's uh, a volunteer and on the board of Lotsam, will be happy to take anyone over to the apartment after worship today if you have never been in and would like to see it. Or if you just have more questions about Lotsam, uh, see Mina. Will you raise your hand, Mina, so we all see you behind your mask? Perfect. Thank you. Okay, I think that's it in terms of announcements uh, this morning. And uh, let us begin as we usually do first by lighting our peace candle. And then we share in statio, which is a, a holy pause. It's a moment when we put aside all the worries of the day, all the stressors of the day, when we put aside even just our, our individual uh, lives for a moment and we come together as one community. And we are one community, whether we're here in person or online, we are held together by the spirit who joins us as a family of faith. So let us open ourselves to God's spirit in our midst. This is the call to worship. We are seeking deeper faith in place to belong to feelings that God has given us. We are seeking joy in the overflow, the movement of the spirit, and the hands holding along the way. We are seeking the freedom to be, the courage to love, the conviction to act in the face of injustice. We are seeking, but here in this space, we are found. Take a deep breath. This is your sanctuary. God is here. Let us praise God.
Let us pray. God, pray in thy life. Help us to prepare for the coming of Christ. Smooth out our roughness when it hurts ourselves and others. Lift up the hidden parts of our lives, the talents, the visions, the tenderness, so that your love may be seen and your glory revealed in us. As the season unfolds, help us, like Mary and Elizabeth, to rejoice in your surprising love. Amen. Over the first three weeks of Advent, we lit candles for hope, peace, and joy. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, we light a candle for love. God's love is like an open door. God's love is the street light that guides us home. God's love is a warm bed to fall into. God's love is a table with room for you. God's love is a crackling fireplace. God's love is the sun that streams through the windows. God's love is the roof over our heads and the floor beneath our feet. God's love is a home for you and me, for neighbors and strangers, for family and friends, for enemies and partners. God's love is a home for all. We light the candle of love to remind us of this truth. Let us pray together. O oh, loving God, may this light be a reminder that we are close to home. May we carry love with us, and may your light and love continue to guide our paths. Amen. Let your light shine, let your light shine, and lead us home. Let your light shine, let your light shine, let your light shine, and lead us home. Lead us home, lead us home, lead us home, lead us home. Let your light shine, let your light shine, let your light shine, and lead us home. Let your light shine, let your light shine, let your light shine. Lead us home, lead us home, lead us home, lead us home.
As we prepare to hear our scripture reading today, um, today we're going to hear the story of Mary and Elizabeth, uh, two women who were unexpectedly pregnant, uh, who find community and connection and courage uh, with each other. Uh, right before our story that we're going to hear this morning is when Mary heard from the angel Gabriel that she was going to uh, become pregnant, that she would have a son. Uh, named Jesus, who would be called the Son of God and who would sit on the throne of his ancestor David. Kind of some surprising news to her, I'm sure. Uh, but when she gets this news uh, in our story this morning, she runs to the home of Elizabeth, who we heard about a couple weeks ago, who is now pregnant uh, with John the Baptist. This is one of the few stories in scripture um, that focuses exclusively on women and gives space for women's voices to be heard. As we'll see, uh, these two women offer blessings to each other, and we're going to hear Mary sing her famous Magnificat, her song of praise, which is praise for all that God has done and will do, a vision of justice for all. So as we hear this text, uh, may the Spirit bless us with openness and with understanding. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her, by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For God has looked with favor on the lowliness of God's servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is God's name. God's mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. God has shown strength with God's own arm, and God has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. The Holy One has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and has sent the rich away empty. God has helped God's own servant Israel in remembrance of God's mercy. According to the promise of God made to our ancestors, to Abraham and Sarah, and to their descendants forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. This is the word of God for the people of God. Hello LOUCC, my name is Gabby and I'm the Faith Development Coordinator. At this time, if you are in sixth grade or younger, we invite you to come forward and sit on the wooden step right here, safely spaced apart and facing our friends and families in their seat. So if you're in sixth grade or younger, go ahead and come forward.
So this is the season of Advent where we celebrate and tell the story of the birth of Jesus. Today in church school, we are going to read another short story book and we're gonna make a star ornament. And we will also do a fun activity sheet. I invite all of you to please join me in a prayer blessing over our children. God, thank you for bringing all of us together today. We pray for our children as they learn more about the birth of Jesus, that they may continue to grow in their love for you and for others. We pray for learning, joy, and continued safety for our children and the congregation. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Will you join me in a spirit of prayer? Oh, gracious God, as we continue through this Advent season, just be with us. Fill us with your spirit as you did with Mary and Elizabeth long ago. And just open our eyes to see you, our ears to hear you, our hearts to feel you with us, and our feet to follow in your way. And we pray this in your name, O oh Christ. Amen. So decades ago, I, I heard somewhere or read somewhere that um, to be happy and healthy and whole in our society, we are, as people are supposed to be part of um, five communities. That is that we're supposed to have five places where we um, sense connection or feel like we belong. And this can be anything from a family to school to work to a team, to a volunteer opportunity, but that these uh, communities help ground us and ground our identity. And I remember thinking, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, sure, I've got five. This is probably also in my 20s when I had a lot of time and a lot of energy. And nowadays, I think five, wow, that feels actually like a lot. And many of us would feel lucky enough if we have one or two such spaces. I think that, uh, well, I don't know, I guess part of it is the modern life, uh, modern American life as we're living it, or the pace of our life, or certainly the pandemic. Um, but I think the default these days is definitely more toward isolation than to community, more toward um, fear maybe or holding back than it is to that sense of belonging or more about sort of pulling ourselves up by our bootstraps than uh, leaning into uh, it takes a village mentality. And so it's one of the reasons that I just resonate with the story this morning, which is really an intimate portrait of community and connection about how we all need places to belong, to feel like we can share all of who we are and what's happening to us. and. Um, what happens when we have those kinds of places, how we can face the future with courage and with hope. Our story this morning uh, begins with Mary, and she has just received that word from Gabriel that she's gonna bear a son, and uh, I am guessing it would be surprising news. I don't know about you, but if an angel came to me and told me that I was gonna pr get pregnant and have the son of God, I would be probably freaking out uh, just a little bit. And my guess is she was too, and that it probably felt a bit isolating and a bit daunting to get this news. And so what's interesting here is what Mary does. Um, she runs to the house of her cousin, Elizabeth. Now, she could have gone to some other places. She could have gone and talked to Joseph about it. She could have gone back to her family of origin. Uh, but we know she lived in a society where to be young and unwed and pregnant would not have been um, highly regarded in any kind of way. So where she goes is to this cousin Elizabeth, or this relative, who Gabriel has also told her is in a similar situation, uh, who is pregnant with a child in her later years. Now I can imagine uh, Mary going on this journey, um, probably practicing what she might have said in her head, like, Elizabeth, you're never going to believe this, but i got to tell you something, or Elizabeth, I'm really scared, I don't know where else to turn, 
or Elizabeth, are you sitting down? I have to share something with you. Um, and what's interesting is uh, she probably didn't expect what she actually got, which is it's, the text tells us that when she came to the house, uh, she's barely even crossed the threshold. All she does is call out a greeting and say, hello, Elizabeth. And the words that come back to her right away are, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Imagine that kind of greeting as you're carrying all that angst and that worry and to be received with that sense of love and welcome uh, from your cousin. For Elizabeth, we know the text tells us that as soon as she heard Mary's voice, that baby, John the Baptist, kicked in Elizabeth's belly. And uh, it says Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and began to pronounce these blessings. What we see is just this beautiful moment of recognition, of holiness, of tenderness between these two women as they sort of revel in these unexpected pregnancies. We know from the story we heard two weeks ago that Elizabeth had also been living in seclusion, it said, and you might remember that her husband Zachariah, for better or worse, was made mute, so he's been shut up now for six months. And so she too has been alone. And so when Mary and Elizabeth come together, it's like they have time to talk and be together and let their voices be heard. And I picture them, it says Mary stayed there three months, I picture them just sort of gabbing away these next three months. And what they are doing essentially is offering to each other the two things that they most need, which is community and connection a space to belong, to be safe, to um, let all their fears and joys out. And I can imagine them just spending that time uh, talking about their excitement, uh, their fears, comparing baby bumps, uh, morning sickness, and just journeying with to together uh, in that state. There's an incredible gift in community like that, in those safe spaces, in those places of belonging. And we see what happens for Mary and Elizabeth in that space because what happens is Mary hears that blessing and experiences that safety and that mutuality and she launches into this Magnificat, which is really a way that Mary takes her own story and puts it in line with God's story. Uh, she has the space to figure out, well, what am, I, what am I doing and what am I here for and what am I called to? And the Magnificat begins with this beautiful, uh, you know, my soul magnifies the Lord. And she begins to praise God for everything that God has done in her life and uh, lifting her up from this lowly estate that what the world might look, look at and sort of see her and her predicament as a liability, she can tell that God sees it for good and that God will use her and help her uh, to bring about good things. Her song then turns into a praise, not just for what God has done for her, but for what God is doing in the world and for um, this vision of, of what the world can be. And she, like we heard last week with Isaiah and John the Baptist and in previous weeks, talks about this great leveling where the mighty will be brought down from their thrones, the lowly lifted up, where the hungry will be fed and those who are rich will be sent away empty handed. We talked about how this isn't a, a role reversal, it's not making inequality in the other way, but it's actually leveling things out. So there's enough for everybody, enough food, enough resources, enough power. And that uh, Mary is now part of that story. Mary and her baby and Elizabeth and her baby are part of that great work of love and justice in the world. And so I think that there is something in this for us because we are all, a Mary or Elizabeth in our own way. We are all called to play a role in that unfolding a story of God's love and peace and justice. And each of us is uniquely called as we are in the particular circumstances of our lives to help bear uh, God's love and justice in the world. And it's through places of community and connection and belonging where we can have the space and the support uh, to see how we are being called, to, to really let ourselves be seen and known and understand our gifts and figure out how they're part of uh, what God is doing in the world. 
I was thinking about this yesterday because we had a children's chapel uh, here at church, which is a time when we gather our families. And as part of those gatherings, each time we send the kids off with lovely uh, adult volunteers who hang out with them and the parents have a time uh, just to sit and be together. And we're really trying to foster that as a time for our parents to just be, um, to be honest, to be real, and really to belong and to be able to say, you know, this is hard to come out of that sense of isolation and just talk about, um, boy, trying to parent in a pandemic is really difficult. And how do we support one another? And how can we um, still encourage each other to be our own people, uh, even as we're learning how to parent in this time? And so the questions we ask are, you know, how, how are we being called to be most fully ourselves um, as people and as parents in this season? And what is this teaching us about who God is and how we're called to live out God's love and justice in the world, how we're called to help our kids uh, do that? And I feel like these questions that we're, that we're wrestling with really are questions for all of us, that as we come out of this time of isolation, as we are beginning to reconnect with each other here at church and just other places. And as we're kind of creating the world we want post pandemic, um, those questions are alive for us about who are we and what have we experienced and how are we being called and how can we weave our story into the larger story of what God is doing in the world. And so uh, to me, this is so much of what our Advent journey is about, what the season it's about. It's also about I think what our church year is about as we try to listen to the spirit and the story to discern our way forward. We need those places of community and uh, connection to have that space. And my hope is that as a church, we can help be that and foster that for each other. So as we continue our Advent journeys, may we um, find and build and be those places of connection and community for each other. May we celebrate who God is calling us to be. And may we weave our story into that larger story of what God is doing in the world. Amen. out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great and my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait you fixed your sight on your servant's plight and my weakness you did not spurn so from east to west shall my Burn. Wipe away all tears for the t- 
dawn draws near and the world is about to We come now to our time of prayer, and I will offer um, specific intercessions on our behalf. Um, each one will end with the phrase, God and your love, and I invite you to respond, hear our prayer. Um, during the last prayer, I'll leave room for you to add your own uh, prayers that you like, which you can do silently, aloud, or if you're watching from home, you can uh, share in the chat box. Also, just a reminder, this is live stream, so this is uh, on a public platform. If you have a private prayer that you'd um, like to share just with our prayer chain, you can uh, go to our website, loucc.org, and hit the request bear, uh, prayer button. Again, those of you participating online, you could find the link to the prayer chain in um, the chat. Or if you're here in the pews, there is a pink slip of paper on the back of the pew in front of you, and you can fill that out and drop it in the offering basket as you leave, and then we'll make sure that gets sent out to our prayer chain. So now, will you join me in a spirit of prayer? Oh, gracious God, we thank you for your presence with us today and for all the ways that your spirit moves in and through our lives. As we remember the story of Mary and Elizabeth, we thank you for these women who modeled courage and compassion, community and connection. Help us to find those places of belonging and love that we need and help us to be those places for one another. God, in your love, hear our prayer. Comforting God, we thank you that you come alongside all who are worried and anxious and all who are feeling scared and isolated in these times. We pray for women across the world who are facing unwanted pregnancies and have nowhere to turn. And we ask you for strength for them and compassionate companions on their journeys. We pray for all who are isolated from family and friends by choice or by circumstance. And we pray for peace, comfort, and for opportunities for your spirit to draw near. We pray for all who are facing grief in this season and that your presence and comfort and love may embrace them and hold their tears. God, in your love, hear our prayer. Healing God, we also remember all who are facing illness in this time, and we ask for your healing and strength. We especially remember Brenda and Jan as they face their health concerns. And we also ask you to be with Jane, who had a mild seizure last night, uh, but is doing okay this morning. God, wrap them in your comfort and your care, and be with all who need your presence in this time. God, in your love, hear our prayer. Oh God, we also pray for our community and our world. We pray for peace in places of violence, and for hope in places of fear. We especially remember our students and for all the students, teachers, and administrators who face threats of violence in schools here in Lake Oswego and across our nation. We pray for a world where weapons are turned into plowshares and where we cultivate love and compassion instead of fear and violence. God, in your love, hear our prayer. Finally, O oh God, we pray for those prayers closest to our own hearts, which we offer to you now, silently, aloud, or in the chat. God, in your love, hear our prayer. Oh God, we know that you hear the cries of our hearts. So as we continue to move through this Advent season, draw us closer to you, that we may sense your connection, your presence, your spirit with us. 
All this we ask in the name of Christ, who taught us how to pray, saying, Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We come now to our time of offering. And as we do, I just give thanks for your generosity, which supports all of um, the missions and the ministries of our church. Here at LAUCC, um, we try each week to create um, spaces and opportunities for that community and that connection and just that sense of belonging um, for us to experience that here. And so we uh, try to do that each week in worship and in our coffee hour. We do it through our faith development program and our children's chapels as we had yesterday where uh, families have a chance to connect, parents have a chance to connect, and our kids get to be with other adults in their lives who just love them and support them. Uh, each week we have opportunities for centering prayer and Bible study where um, we see how God is working in our own hearts and we bring our stories into conversation with that larger faith story. And then every Thursday our sojourners gather together for mutual support and care in the latter uh, chapters of our lives. And these are just some of the ways um, that we foster that sense of community and connection and it's your generosity that makes all of these uh, possible. So thank you um, for all the ways that you give. If you would like to give today uh, to support these and other ministries, you're welcome to do so. Uh, you can go online to our website, loucc.org, and hit the Give button. Or again, those of you online can follow the link in the chat. You can text to give at the number in your bulletin or in the chat. Uh, and you're welcome to uh, send a check to the church, or if you're here today, to leave check or cash in the basket uh, as you leave our sanctuary today. Thank you so much for your generosity and for supporting all of the missions of our church. Let us share your cross and crown. 
And uh, just a reminder that I hope we'll see some of you during our worship services this week. Uh, as a reminder, tomorrow night we have Longest Night, uh, 7 p.m. on Zoom, Christmas Eve at 4 and 7, and sign-ups are already available online. And then next Sunday we'll be back here, 10.30 a.m. Uh, for Jose y Maria, and sign-ups will go out later today via email. Uh, we now will have an opportunity for coffee hour and fellowship with each other. So those of us here in the sanctuary, uh, we can greet each other after the service here in the sanctuary or the fellowship hall. And I'll also be greeting folks as we uh, leave the doors today. And uh, those of you online, Ralph and Penny Holcomb will be hosting coffee hour uh, this morning. And you can find the Zoom link in the chat box. It's also in the e-news and in the bulletin. Um, let's see, also those of you here in the sanctuary this morning, yesterday at Children's Chapel, our families and kids made mission bags, which some of you know about. These are little bags that have uh, socks, juice, granola bars, things that um, people who may not have a home uh, might need. And so they're nice to have in your car if you're ever passing someone who might be on a corner or holding up a sign. Uh, you can give this as a tangible gift. So we have a bunch in the entryway. Please help yourself and take them and distribute them uh, as we go into the world this uh, Christmas week. So now I invite you to receive uh, this blessing. Friends, we are called into community and connection with each other. We are called to be known and loved and seen just as God has made us. And we are called to bring our story into uh, the conversation with God's story as we are part of bringing about God's love and justice and peace in the world. So may we go forth this day on this holy week, knowing that this is our call and ready to share in love, community, belonging, and care for others. Go in peace to love and serve. Amen. <laughs>